Happy holidays, guys, and happy new year. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about growth plate problems. The growth plates have several layers. The reserve zone, which is the resting zone, it's a zone here. And then proliferative zone. You see the cells? They're like columns on top of each other. Then the zone of hypertrophy. And the zone of hypertrophy got three layers. Zone of maturation. Cells mature. Then degenerate. Zone of degeneration. And then zone of provisional calcification. After the cells mature, degenerate, and dies, then it becomes calcified. That's called the zone of hypertrophy, and that creates a lot of confusion because of the sub-zones. So let's start with the reserve zone. You can have two problems, Gaucher disease and the diastrophic dwarfism. And you can see the reserve zone is right here. The next one, polyreferative zone, then after the, that, the zone of hypertrophy. The reserve zone can be affected by Gaucher disease. It's an enzyme problem. If it's an enzyme, so it is an autosomal recessive. And it can create a vascular necrosis of the femoral head in children. If you find an X-ray of a child have bilateral vascular necrosis in it, an exam, it is a Gaucher disease. How about the astrophic dwarfism? <coughs> the, the astrophic dwarfism, you find a cauliflower ear and hitchhiker thumb. Failure of sulfate transport. You need the sulfate for the proteoglycan. Chondroitin sulfate and keratin sulfate. It is an autosomal recessive problem. How about the proliferative zone? There's a high rate of activity, high rate of oxygen tension. It is columns. The cells are uh, maturing, divide, dividing, uh, and basically it can create two problems. One of them is the rickets. Sorry, one of them is achondroplasia, not the rickets. And the achondroplasia is the shorter dwarfism with short limbs. And it happened because of FGFR3 mutation. You can have a spinal stenosis and champagne glass outlet of the pelvis. So this proliferative zone if it doesn't work, you can have a shorter person. If it becomes very active, you can have gigantism, a very tall person. Now we go to the third zone, hypertrophic zone. Hypertrophic zone, most of the problems happen in the hypertrophic zone. The rickets. The slipped epiphysis, the Salter Harris fracture, all of them happen in the hypertrophic zone. It is the weakest zone. So a lot of problems happen there. So if you say no, the fractures happen in the zone of provisional calcification, you are correct, but they will never give you the hypertrophic zone and the three other zone as a choice, which is degeneration, maturation, degeneration, and provisional calcification. These are the three 
layers. They will never give you that provisional calcification with hypertrophic zone. They will give you a hypertrophic zone with the resting zone or the proliferative zone, uh, or maybe zone of you know something else, uh, but not hypertrophic zone and zone of provisional calcification. So if becomes a fracture, it is probably provisional calcification, which is part of the hypertrophic zone. The scurvy will come from affection of the primary spongiosa, and that may be one of the selection to confuse you with rackets. Rackets will be zone of hypertrophy. So this question is a, a question of rackets, which zone rackets occur. So rackets will occur in that zone, in zone D. That is the zone of hypertrophy. Achondroplasia will occur in zone C, zone of hypertrophy. Is down here. This is the C, the proliferative zone. And then the resting zone is B. So we repeat them again. B is the resting zone. C is the hypertrophy. Sorry, uh, Z is the proliferative zone. And D is the zone of hypertrophy, which will include maturation, degeneration, and provisional calcification. And then you have E, the provision, the, uh, the secondary and the primary spongiosa. You get the scurvy from the primary spongiosa. So rickets is the zone of hypertrophy. The chondroplasia is C. The astrophic dwarfism is B. The scurvy is E. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful. Thank you.